This world of instant celebrity is hard to imagine just how celebrity was created all of those years ago. I mean, literally all of those years ago. Way back in the 1920s at the Savoy Hotel, this man, Harry Craddock, was internationally famous. Born in the 1800s and then came over here uh, from the US, and was a fascinating guy, in fact, because he literally became the barman of international fame. It wasn't though without a few problems because as he turned up at the Savoy where he managed to get a job, there was one person in particular that was standing in his way. Ada Coleman was the creator and worker at the Savoy Hotel for their famous cocktails. She created a world famous drink the Hanky Panky, and this gave Harry Craddock an idea. So much so that he suggested to the management that perhaps Ada wasn't all she seemed, and in fact he could create something better, and more importantly, bigger. Naturally, they liked the idea. But moving forward, this meant once again that a woman was taken out of a very pivotal place where she was doing incredibly well, because Harry, very forceful, very powerful, told them that he could make the Savoy Hotel literally world famous, all thanks to what he had planned. And so they listened. By 1928, Harry had come together with a lot of different cocktails and they were impressed. So much so that the sales were shooting through the roof at the American bar. But Harry had another idea, simply because although the sales were getting bigger and bigger, he suggested to the Savoy that why not put out their very own cocktail book. And this is what was born in 1930. But by this point, Harry had become so famous, Madame Tussauds had come knocking on his door to make a waxwork of him because so many people were literally coming in to Madame Tussauds asking if they had actually a wax of Harry. That's how powerful he became. But of course, everything changes and basically he decided that his time at the Savoy was running dry. This wasn't because they didn't like him or indeed he didn't enjoy the job but money talks, so he moved over here to the Dorchester Hotel. Now, while the American bar was being refurbished, they asked Harry to put together certain contents of a cocktail shaker, and they decided to bury it inside the newly minted walls. While they were refurbishing the hotel many years later, to this day, nobody's been able to find that cocktail shaker. This is exactly how Harry ended up working here at the Dorchester. Similar because they asked him to do the same thing. He came over here for a lot more money and for many years, although enjoyed a lot of prestige, was never as famous as he was at the Savoy Hotel. Now the book today is still available and they still sell it online. Incredible to think, isn't it? And it's become the book that everybody goes to if you want to make those all time classic cocktails. As for Harry, he left uh, the Dorchester Hotel in 1947 and finally ended up working at a smaller bar called Brown's. He never really achieved the fame again, and a lot of people were basically disputing exactly where did all of his money go. Sadly, not much is known about Harry's final demise. Apparently, he ended up in a pauper's grave, but many years later, they actually gave him the celebration and fitting send-off that he should deserve. But if you are thinking about, well, having the odd cocktail here and there, have a drink on Harry. After all, he was the man that truly invented what became the very fashionable cocktail hour. And all the ladies of the 1920s, right through to the 30s, well, they all saluted Harry, but like everything, time moves on and changes everything. As a footnote though, one person who always liked to be served by Harry here at the Dorchester Hotel was none other than Old Blue Eyes himself. That's right, Frank Sinatra who was in awe of Harry's fame and could not believe that Harry himself had never opened his own bar or pushed himself forward in an entrepreneurial way. So much so, there was talk that Frank might even fund Harry's own bar. Sadly, he declined. Just goes to show, doesn't it though, what happens with fame. You can have it all and then of course, in the blink of an eye, people have forgotten you. But actually, when you have something like what Harry had with the Savoy cocktail book, it seemingly just lives on. Although many people will look at the cocktails and make them, sadly, they don't remember the man who created them. It's always nice to give a nod, as I often say here on the show, to those that have gone before.
So if you're lucky enough to go into the Savoy or have a cocktail in the Dorchester, why not raise a glass to Harry? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.